I got some stuff done since the last stream. I got the I got the animations working. Um, they now actually blend over the network or they blend locally rather. So what I do, and I'm not using the network animator because I don't really like how that just snaps values. What I do is if an input is changed, then the server will check to see if that input needs to be sent, for example, in this case direction. And if it does, it will send it at intervals and then it will update locally on the clients, smoothing it out so it looks nice and good. There are some things that will send instantly though, like the jump triggers. Since those don't have to be smoothed, those will send automatically. Um, some other things I did is I moved the FPS arms slightly to the lower right, no big deal there. And I'm actually working on moving them to the prefab instead of the camera because I don't like them under the camera. And we'll get back to that in a second. Another thing I did, which you can probably see and you've probably seen from the screenshots, is I did a lot of level design work. I'm still going to get rid of these walls here, these little bits, and I'm going to replace them with uh, stuff that kind of fits in better, like these rocks and, and trees and whatnot. I still have a few colliders to set up, but this level has actually been designed in a manner that it should be impossible to hide anywhere and be protected 100%. So what I mean from that is let's say you're tucked in over on this corner and you're watching this this side over here and maybe you're peeking there. You have a pretty good idea of what's going around, right? And you can't really, you, you feel pretty safe. Um, but you can't actually cover all the areas because someone could come in through the cave system here and just jump up and get you get you in your back and every single access point on the map is designed that way um, usually you can cover you know one area maybe two areas but there's always a blind spot but at the same time i also designed it so that you won't just get like popped randomly by running into the open ideally you can travel between points without having to worry about every single angle being exposed and I also have this nice little sniper nest which can uh, cover a lot of this area. And you got a pretty good vantage point, but someone could theoretically, depending where you're standing, go over in this corner and get you, or they could um, definitely come up to the caves and get you, which if you may notice, uh, you have a good view here, but you have basically no view of this. And you can step out and get some, but that's not to say that someone can't still get you through there. And it's just set up all the way like that so that you can uh, go between areas. You can actually keep your crosshairs lined up on you know, new, new access points while also clearing old ones. And there's still a chance that someone could pop out. That's just part of, part of the genre. Um, but it's designed for the most realistic feel of a FPS game, something kind of like CSGO. And uh, what else have I done? Let's see. There was another issue actually um, with the last stream where if you were to, let me just find an example. Let's say if I were to try to jump up on this thing right here and I, I landed right here, even though this isn't a slope I can climb, the character controller was still able to stick to it. And I fixed that by checking the angle against your moving direction and if you were trying to move onto a slope that you couldn't be, then it would repel you off from it. And that fixed that pretty good. All right, so I know this says weapon selection, and that is what I was working on when I thought the stream was working and it was not. Um, so what I did is I generated a couple weapon names of ones that it looks like I have models for. And I have a weapon handler, which will hold information about which current weapon you're using. I also have a weapon script, which will show the um, things like fire rate, damage, um, the model for the weapon so I can show and hide the model, and various things like that. And I have a set equipped method, which will essentially just hide the model or show it. It'll probably also um, maybe communicate with the weapon handler. I'm not sure if I want 
it to go that way or if I want the weapon handler to communicate with this. But uh, one way or the other, it's going to go like that. And also, on the grounds of moving the arms to the body, I under my looking script, I have the first person object reference and an offset reference. And the FPS camera is actually going to reference these and set the position of those arms and rotation to the camera. And that's where I left off and I was actually just about to test that out. So let me go ahead and do that now. All right, so um, I can't see my arms. Let me see where they're at. It looks like they are definitely there. They're just um, in the wrong spot. So two issues is that these arms should be moving as the camera moves. And I think I know why they're broken. It's because the player moves and the arms are moving with the player. So that's probably throwing it off a bit. Uh, that kind of makes sense. So that kind of is something I did not consider. Uh, what should I do about that? I don't plan on recycling player prefabs at this time. So I think I will just simply detach the arms. So let me go ahead and do that now. And I don't actually need to run this in update if I'm going to do that. Okay, so it's not that I'm actually opposed to having the arms underneath the camera, it's that I don't like that they're there before the character spawns in. I also don't like the fact that I can't um, set the arms under the model, so if I have multiple models, and I'd have to somehow associate that with the camera, whereas if I just do it this way, it'll work fine. All right, so main player is down here. The arms are gone which is right and they're underneath the camera however they're probably at the wrong offset and I forgot to actually set the rotation on the arms to be zero or um, quaternion dot identity so let me just do that real quick All right, so the arms are under the camera, but they're probably too low or too high. They're too high, I think. 
Where's the camera? Camera's right here. Arms are way up there. Way up there. Okay, so they definitely need to be adjusted. So let's go ahead and just move these back a little and get this more like CSGO style. Uh, my crosshair is gone. I have that disabled, so let me re-enable that real quick. All right, that looks okay. I still think they're taking up too much screen space, just a tad too much. That's probably a little better. So let me go ahead and copy this offset. And let's see, I'm gonna go with 7.5. And there we go. Copy component. Now I need to go to my prefab. And under looking, I'm gonna change these values to the values of that current. Uh, so we got 0.2. And I'm just going to copy this one. All right, so now if I stop and hit play again, we should be good. Hey, everyone, how's it going? Sorry about the stream starting late. Um, we had technical difficulties, and I, I, I think it was my fault. <laughs> uh, so we got some weird flickering going on. What's that all about? It looks like they're looks like they're jumping, uh, but they shouldn't be moving because, there's, as far as I know, there's nothing else that controls the arms. I almost wonder if it's an animation that's driving it like that. It could be an animation. So let me just take a quick look. I'm going to turn off the animator. Yeah. So what you're seeing is you're actually seeing something to do with the animation that was very broken. Yeah, all right. So um, let me just go back to my player here and make sure I have that set up right because I don't think I... Yeah, so right now they're both using the same animator. I don't think that's set up. So I'm going to fix that real quick. First person. There we go. Let me try one more time. All right, so I know it's still the animator. And... Um, I'm not super concerned about this just yet. It's because the moving animation is lowering the hips, and that's why it looks really goofy. Let me fix that real quick. All right, so I need to do if base dot is client and base dot has authority then return i don't want to set the movement animations when i'm in first person and that should fix that i probably need to add an actual method that checks that um, okay and the flickering is now gone so we're good re-enable my crosshairs and I'm actually am I'm going to do um, private pool is first person and I'm just going to more or less copy this
I'm not sure if has authority is true on the server. So I might need to change that. But on the plus side, I can just do this. And if I ever need to change this to work properly, if it is indeed broken, then I can just update that one method and we're good. I'm not the right person to ask that question. I don't work for Mirror. Um, I actually have pretty much no affiliation with Mirror. Yes, I, I create videos for them, um, but like I don't get any of their profits. I don't work on the project. Um, I have some insight, but very little. I would definitely recommend checking that out with them. I will, I will say, however, that I tried the free tier with AWS and it was really bad. Like the, the CPU couldn't handle it. Um, and this was on like a really, really, really basic project and it kept lagging out so, so bad. Um, so I'd say probably not many at all. But again, maybe, maybe ask the mirror team, they might know a little better. All right, so I got my FPS arms working. And um, now I can go back to my weapon handling. I need to actually add weapons to the character. And the reason, that's part of the reason I moved the arms over is so that I can more easily, I can just like drop in the player prefab here. And then I can set the offset for first person. And then I can also see it for uh, third person as well. Let me go ahead and check that out. I actually only have the pistol pose in there right now, so I'm probably going to have to do something about that as well. Uh, I'll almost likely have to make another animation pose. All right, pistol. I know I already have a pistol in there, but it doesn't follow this pack, so I'm going to actually do that again here. The pistol you see is the one I, I made in my modeler um, or blender. Yes. I'm gonna actually drop the one in from the pack. Uh, it wants me to, okay. Grr. <laughs> All right. I hate that so much about the prefab system. Pistol. Oh my gosh, that's gigantic. Okay. Let's see, let's try and get it close as we can. Uh, first we gotta get the rotation. Okay, so the rotation's right. Now I'm going to just try and line it up. I feel like two is probably too big. I'm gonna turn off autosave because it's making things kind of slow. Yeah, I am, and I gotta say, um, it's made work a lot quicker because I don't have to model a bunch of stuff, but I don't want to trash someone's work. I hate doing it, but they have a lot of issues. Um, definitely use them for prototyping, would not use them for anything beyond that. Like the reason I'm not using his Blockman character, which I wanted to use, is because it doesn't work in Unity as a rigged model. Um, he doesn't have a head bone on it. I don't know why he he neglected to put the head bone on the unit, but he he did. All right, so that looks pretty close for that. Um, I need to just make this slightly bigger, maybe. All right, now I just need to... I don't know what socket IO is, sorry. 
I think the width is a little too big. All right, that's close. I think that's close enough to make me happy. Oh, maybe if I just move it over a little bit. All right, we're going to call that good. Deleting the old pistol now. The animation still fits it really well, um, so that's fine. And now I'm going to copy this. Uh, actually, I need to first go over to my first person one and add the same exact thing. And this is another reason I like having the arms under the same model. It makes doing this a lot easier. Get rid of that pistol. I'm just going to drop in the same pistol there. And I'm going to take my transforms and copy them and paste them. And voila, there we go. Now if I actually go into the game, it should be fine. Okay, yeah, that looks all right. And the reason the arms are gray and the um, body is not is because I didn't color the arms yet. I'll go ahead and do that now. It'll only take a second. There we go. I'm actually going to revert and then I'm going to do it again. simply because I didn't want to accidentally override my prefab ones just in case because I don't I didn't autosave did I but the weapons there uh maybe it saves when you close okay yeah it must because that looks like that's still right actually it's off isn't it oh I'm such an idiot okay so I didn't autosave my prefabs here um, somehow, it's so weird. It's there. It's right. But it looks different in the first person one, I'm pretty sure. That's weird. So let's see. Same offsets. Same offsets. Let me just double check. I could just be losing my mind, but I think they're not actually in the right spot here. Oh, you know what it is? I know what it is now. Really easy fix. Um, The one on the first person one has to be the no clip layer. The camera's picking it up wrong, that's why. There we go. Now we're cooking. Looks like there's still some issues with the jumping. Um, that's probably another thing with the animation, so let me just go over to my animator controller here. And I'm going to do if uh, base or if is first person then return and that'll probably fix that pretty quick and yeah we're good to go all right so let's get another weapon in there and then we could work on the weapon switching again Going to do the third person first, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this weapon because I don't have an animation pose for it yet. 
and it's just going to be reworked anyway. Um, so let me just drop it under here. And like the other one, it is incredibly massive. Uh, so I'm going to copy the transform stuff, paste it in there. And now it's really tiny. Um, bump this up a tiny bit, 0.3. I think that's a little too big. We'll try that. And um, I'll just keep it like that for now. Because <laughs> he's not going to hold an assault rifle like you would a pistol. Uh, so once I make a new animation for that, I'll fix it. Again, I have to put this one under the no clip layer because it is on the first person arm. Oh, I'm sorry, Gabe, I missed your question. Um, I don't think your networking experience directly correlates with which solution you use. I think your objective should determine which solution you use. If you're releasing a mobile game, uh, you could probably use pun 2 if you want. I don't think that's going to really hurt it. But if you're releasing a desktop game and you're concerned about cheating, for example, if you want to ensure there's, there's no cheating or you make it as difficult as possible to cheat, you probably want to use Mirror or something like Mirror that's server authoritative. Um, if you don't really care about that, if you don't think that's going to be a concern, and uh, you especially if you're doing mobile only and you want like built-in matchmaking, then you could always go with pun. And yeah, Mirror is working on a matchmaking solution, but I, I honestly have, like I said before, I have no insight with Mirror because I'm not actually a part of that group. So um, when it actually hits, you know, hits the ground, I'm not really sure. I need to add a crouch ability too. That was weird. I feel like I was just kind of floating on something a second ago. I will look into it at another time. I might just be going crazy. I'll have to rewatch the stream. All right, so um, now I have it in different weapons, so now I need to configure them. So let's see, going back to my player script, and I'm going to make a new object. I'm going to call it weapons. And I'm going to make a new object for every weapon. I'll have one for M4A1. I'll have one for the Glock. I'll have one for frag grenade. And I'm going to add the weapon script to all of these. All right, so um, I guess this would technically be as quickly as you could pull the trigger. So I need to have one more thing in here that's like an automatic field. Um, that way this will indicate if it's an automatic weapon or not, in which case the Glock is not. The M4A1, however, is technically it's a semi-auto. I think it actually has semi burst and auto in real life. I could be wrong, but we're just going to say automatic. All right, so clip size of the Glock is not that big. I don't actually know how big the clip is. Um, we'll just go with like 12. And we'll say the maximum capacity is like 35. And um, We'll go at 25 on this, and then we'll just keep that at 90. Uh, the M4 is going to do significantly more damage. Uh, let's see. Let me just pull out my calculator here on the left, or off screen, my left. And four shots, four or five shots, let's say 4.5, let's say five shots. Now I'm going to go with four shots will will be sufficient. So I'll just say 25 damage. 
actually, I'm going to be an overachiever and do 27. Yeah, okay. Um, the Glock is going to do a measly, like, 15 damage. And that's still not too bad, but it's not going to fire as quickly, obviously. And it's semi-auto. Semi uh, so now I need to find the model. I actually... I think I need to put in two things for that. Um, I need to set one up for the first person and the third person. Actually, I'm going to leave out that check. I was going to add a null check, which I probably would do normally, but. Um, I want to throw an error if I don't have it set up right. All right. So, um, this is the Glock. So the first one I need to drop in is the pistol under the third person. I need to do it under the first person as well. I can already see a problem with this actually. Um, I need to have two different fields because depending on if I'm the owner or the spectator, I want to hide or show the first or third person thing. So I'm actually going to go back to this again and rename this to first person model and then make another one for a third person model. All right. Um, cool owner. So let's see. If owner first person model dot set active equip else third person dot set active equipped Oops, come on so basically if I'm a spectator it's going so not the owner of the object it's going to um, set the third person pistol active or inactive because I shouldn't be seeing their first person arms to begin with um, which reminds me I need to actually go to another script on my player, go here, and let's rename this to um, third person objects, yeah that pong, that pong example is uh, pretty intense. Yeah, Mirror does have a, a Pong example, I think, actually. So, there you go. <laughs> Even figure that one out for you pretty quick. All right. Uh, so I have here. This could need not apply anymore. Um, get rid of that. Actually, I'm going to change it a little bit. Uh, private void. Show. Actually, I'm going to call it toggle objects. Bull. Um, owner. So basically, what this is going to do 
is if the owner of the object, it's going to toggle off these and toggle on these. So toggles on first or third person objects based on owner status. Let's just do if owner. And uh, for I dot third person objects that link. All right, so that's going to disable the third person objects and There's actually an easier way to do this. Um, just change this to first. All right. Fix that typo there. Basically, what this will do is if you're not the owner, then it will enable these. If you are the owner, it will enable these. And now I just need to call uh, toggle objects based on has authority. And if the server, then I'm going to call toggle objects false, as in not the owner, because the server needs to have the third person objects enabled so that it can um, move them around like the animator and stuff so that it hits register properly and whatnot. Ah, well that's just part of um, the server authoritative environment, Gabe, and that's something you'll have to code yourself. If you want that kind of behavior for um, pun, well you can't really do it because that's client authoritative. So you kind of answered your own question there. If you need server authority, you have to ultimately go and mirror regardless. Okay. So that's set up now. That'll hide and show the proper um, proper items or body. I suppose I need to have like some kind of a way to actually switch weapons now. So let's put that under um, Let's do this, serialize field, private object, um, weapons parent. This is going to be the object which will hold all of the weapons. And I need to put this on my player. This is a test script, I won't be using that. Weapon, weapon handler, uh, weapons parent is all the way down here. And now I need to at a private field, weapon, and this is going to be an array actually, and it's going to be weapons. This is the current weapons. I like to initialize my arrays uh, with zero just because it saves me the problem of possibly having to do a null check if I'm just like initializing for the first time. That could be problematic, of course, if you have to um, initialize once off from your weapons and they haven't initialized yet. You don't really have a way to check that. I guess you could check the length. So either way, I like to initialize with a um, zero length rather than leaving it null. So let's go private void awake. And this is gonna have to be done on most likely all clients and the server. So I'm going to do this in awake. So I'm going to do set weapons. Yes, I try to stream um, 
four to five times a week. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. It entirely depends on how busy I am, if, if I have work that day or if I'm out fishing. Fishing takes up a huge portion of my life, I'm not going to lie. It's like the only hobby I have. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. Set weapons. This is going to be weapons equals weapons parents dot get component. Uh, it needs to be a transform, doesn't it? Oh, duh. Get components and children weapon. By the way, I don't really make it really clear in some of the um, earlier videos, but if you join my Patreon on any tier, you can get all of the source codes to all my videos. Um, every single series, all my videos. It doesn't matter which tier you join. The only thing I do want to say is if you are considering that, check the description of the video and make sure it says looking for the source code because not every video has a source code. Like 99% of them do, um, but like all the mirror ones do, I think, all the photon ones do, but some of my other ones don't necessarily have them, so just keep that in mind. You also get some pretty sweet ones too, like the Collider Rollback and the um, Sinking Projectiles and things like that. All right, so this will set my weapons. And now I need the ability to switch weapons. So let's do private void update. I do have those streams up, do I not? Let me check real quick. Oh, that was bad. That was fail. Oh, you know what? Um, I actually moved the playlist because they were cluttering the mirror playlist, and that might be why you're not seeing them. Oh, they're not actually showing, are they? Uh, okay, give me one second, please. I'm going to just look into that real quick. I just need like 30 seconds, everyone. Um, thank you for being patient. All right. So I have them in my, I have those, those videos inside my um, history. And one is set to private because I was editing it and the other one is set to unlist. And I think YouTube did that automatically after I made it public. So YouTube's kind of a jerk when it comes to streaming. It's, it's really hard to work with. Um, honestly, for a company as big as Google, you'd think they'd do it better, but they're, they're done and they are ready. After I am done with this stream, I will just double check and make sure they're working and I will uh, set those to public. Thanks for letting me know. All right, so um, right now I don't have any hotkeys set up for primary or secondary weapons and I don't actually have a way to see if it's a primary or a secondary weapon. So I need to, I'm just going to use my mouse wheel actually to rotate through my weapons for now. I will change it later once the code's working. So if input dot get key down, um, key code dot mouse wheel, okay. I don't know which code is for the mouse. So let me see. Um, I don't think I've ever used the mouse wheel input, which is funny. It might just be, um, I 
I think it's a mouse scroll wheel. Let me check real quick in the input settings. I know there's also an input delta you can use, but eh, I don't really want to deal with that because that could do more than I want to do. So let's just move this out real quick. Yeah, so there is a mouse scroll wheel. Get rid of that. I assume that's a get access. All right, time to spam my console so I can figure out how this works. I have literally never had to use a scroll wheel in any project I've ever made. This is, and again, um, I actually probably will end up keeping it in there, but I'm also going to uh, use like one, two, and three and whatnot as well. I can't really um, help with projects in the middle of a stream because that would basically interrupt the stream and slow it down. Okay, so that's negative and that's positive. Got it. They do have a mirror to score as well you can ask on. Um, they're going to be able to help you more frequently than I am. Like I said, I'm I'm usually really, really, really busy. And I'm not just like trying to ignore people. I I just have a lot of stuff going on and you know, life between hobbies and everything else, so uh okay. Float value equals see, and I can't even code when I'm talking. <laughs> I get distracted so easily. Alright, so value doesn't equal 0f. Um, private int uh, weapon index. I'm going to say 0 for now. I'm going to set weapons. And then I need to select the first weapon on spawn. So I'm also going to do uh, if weapons.length is greater than zero, then zero dot set. Actually, you know what? <clears throat> Let's do this a different way. Okay, so that way it's going to set the weapon equipped if it is the zero index. Oh, I need to do an owner check too. Uh, I didn't consider that. So let me do that on server and client, I suppose. What this is going to do is it's going to select the first weapon found in the array of weapons. Uh, this won't be the behavior that I will always have, but it will be the behavior for now. I think what it will do in the future is it will probably select your primary weapon whenever you start up. You'll see me do a lot of code like this uh, whenever I stream. It's basically like prototyping code and whatnot, and I don't usually finalize a lot of it. I just have a Trello that I make notes on, and I come back to this stuff. That's why in the last stream, if any of you were with me, the animator controller was like complete garbage and mess, and now you can see it's all nice and tidy and commented. 
but I don't I don't always code like this. This is just kind of um, getting things done quickly, and then I come back to it later. So select first weapon. <clears throat> Actually, I can run this. So I'm going to run this on all clients where it selects the first weapon period. But what I should do, whether you're an owner or not, but what I should do is I should make it so that the server will um, tell the clients which weapon selected if they're not the owner. Or maybe even if they are the owner, but also switch weapons. So for now, I'm going to do it this way, though. Remember the server, I'm treating the server as a spectator because I want it to do everything on the third person model. <clears throat> I also want this to be um, to if value is less than zero, then If value equals zero F return. So if there's no action on the scroll wheel, then go ahead and exit the method. This will save me an entirely new um, if check. What I'm going to do basically is I'm going to do if value is less than zero, then I'm going to reduce the index by one. Else, if value is greater than zero F, then I'm going to increase it by one. Now, since I already have if value equals 0f, I could just make this an else statement because if it's not less than 0, it's obviously going to be higher than 0 and not 0 itself. But for the sake of making my code clear and as to what's going on, I'm going to do it that way. And now I'm going to do weapon index equals mathf.clamp 0f. And um, actually, first I'm going to do if weapons dot length equals zero return because I don't need to check to switch weapons if they don't have any weapons. So um, I'm going to clamp it between zero and I'm going to clamp it between the weapons dot length minus one. That way I can't get an overflow in my array. I need to actually clamp the right value though. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, it's an integer. There we go. Okay. So now I need to just switch weapons at this point. Um, I'm going to make another method here. Private void uh, equip weapon int index and again I'm actually going to be doing this by weapon names instead I'm actually going to go ahead and do that right now so let's do equip weapon and I'm going to pass in the weapon name of the weapon on this index I don't think I have that exposed, so let me go check real quick. Oh, I actually don't have it set up at all. Um, private weapon names, weapon name. I like to use enums um, for things like this. I don't like using integers when, when as a person we expect something to be clear and verbose like for example if I go to my character right and let's just open them up real quick and I see that I say oh that's an assault rifle or something like that I don't say oh that's index one that's an assault rifle so whenever I 
pass in um, things and I'm talking about certain objects when I can actually give them names and it makes sense, I do it that way because it's, it's easier to follow the code. <clears throat> okay, so um, this requires the owner check as well which weapon to equip. So I'm going to change this to bool owner. I'm going to drop in the owner and um, This I have to actually probably do twice. Um, actually, no, that's right. Uh, so this would be fine. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself, figuring things out. <clears throat> okay. Who thinks this is going to work the first time? I don't. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Alright, so I'm starting off with... Oh, there is already an error. Already an error. Um, third person model has not been assigned. Okay, let's follow this back. So I have a feeling I probably just, uh, well, according to the error, I most likely just forgot to set the objects on here. Yeah, that's no big deal. Um, third person and first person and going back to the Glock third person and first person all right trying again posting still something is broken let's see weapon um, Let's see where this is happening at. Okay, all that mumble jumble, that's not helpful. Um, let's see. Weapon handler line 34 is where it starts. So let me go over to that. That's probably the unstart server. Yes, select first weapon. False, correct, okay. Let's go back here. And then it goes to say on line 52 where it's probably calling that it said equipped okay so something must be wrong in this method um, it says the model hasn't been assigned but I just did that so I do know I, I missed something else though while setting this up. I forgot to actually change these right here. Oh, it's because of the um, frag grenade one. I'm going to disable this real quick. That's why it's not working.
me just redo it real quick, let's make sure. Check it out. Switching weapons. All right. So the problem is, is that um, one, it's obviously very instant. I don't have any animation set up yet. Um, two, I only have one animation for the holding pose, which is no bueno. And um, another issue is that I c you can't see it, but I'm, I have to actually scroll up and down. Like I can't keep scrolling down and rotate through my previous weapon. So I just need to do that real quick. Um, that's going to be super, super fast. Let's go down here and let's do if weapon index is less than zero, then weapon index equals weapons dot length minus one, putting it at the end. And now let's do else if weapons index greater or equal to weapons dot length, then weapons index, then weapons index equals zero, resetting it to the beginning. And um, <clears throat> weapon index, not plural. All right, let's see what happens. That should fix it. And if everything is working, I think that will be the end of this stream. I'm going to call it at that point, I think. I'll need to do a build first, though. Make sure it's working in a build. Okay, yeah, so it's working. I'm just only using the scrolling down and um, seems to be working okay. Now we make a quick build. Oh, I forgot I added post-processing, so it's going to have to build that. Um, I think this actually goes through every single time, which is so frustrating. Because <laughs> it takes forever. Um, it makes the scene look really nice, but boy does it make build times take forever. And I do need to do a build because one, I need to make sure it's running as a build and not just an editor. And two, because I need to have two clients open. I suppose I could open three editors. I don't know how I really feel about that. But um, yeah, with that said, I'll most likely, if this has to compile the post-processing again from scratch, which I have a feeling it will every single time, then I am going to just rip it out until I'm done. Oh, come on. Okay, so the build finished, but it, it it built full screen on my other screen. And that's because I had to wipe my player settings to fix something. I really don't like that they got rid of the option to um, specify that on get the little launcher where you can choose. Extremely annoying that they got rid of that. Oh, okay. That wasn't so bad. We'll keep post-processing in. I remember in the past, it would always recompile the post-processing shaders, and it was so frustrating. Because you saw it took like an extra like minute or and a half or so to do it. And when your builds normally take like 10 seconds, that's extremely frustrating. Uh, so right now I'm just getting another build up for two clients. Moving it over here. Server only client. Let's. Um, there's only one spawn point, so let's go ahead and move him out of the way. 
Whoops, I just stepped on my truck. <laughs> I'll probably make this collider a little higher because he's stepping on the bumper and he's stepping on the hood. Um, I might actually keep it like that. I kind of like that because then you can just kind of peek over a little bit, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. So let me move this guy out of the way real quick and then let me go back to the other one. Oh, he is floating. And the position is wrong, isn't it? Or it was wrong. What was that all about? He's facing the wrong way. That's 100%. Um, so this used to work. This is a regression. I don't know what I did. Uh, let's see if... He's lined up with the truck. So the position's working, the position is not. So that's a regression. I need to fix that before anything else. Um, I don't know if I actually, let's see. I might need to shrink the character capsule or make the collider smaller as well. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. You're not going to see the weapon switching over to server though because that's not set up yet. Oh, and also I forgot to add the authority check, so I'm switching both players. It's not massive. Um, I actually did it using box colliders and it's, it's precise. I'm pretty sure it's the character controller. I also have floating characters, which is not good. So I need to look into that. I wasn't crazy. I knew something was up. I knew it. So, I don't know when that came about. I'll check into it though. Now, this truck is actually using box colliders, as you can see. I know this looks like a mess, but it, it is actually cheaper than um, using a mesh collider. But it's just stepping up on the bumper, which is right there. It's something to do with the capsule collider. That's all it is. It's really thick. I need to shrink it, I suppose. Problem is, though, is I made it thick because it helps keeping the camera from clipping through things. So um, I will have to. Oh, that's probably why it's actually up higher, is because I made it thicker. Oh, that shouldn't matter, should it? That's something I'll have to look into. Um, needless to say, it is not good as is um but yeah we got a few problems the rotation is not working the gun switching is working fine for the most part i seem to add the authoritative check so that it doesn't do it on both characters um it doesn't look good that i'm able to really stand on this without actually being on it that actually doesn't look horrible it's because I don't have IK and I don't have animations in. Uh, I'll probably add, I'll probably add both of those in at some point. Yeah. Okay. Well. Overall, um, the weapon switching went pretty good. I'm going to just real quick add that authoritative check in there. It'll only take two seconds. Uh, I also need to make it so that this is only done if a client. Okay. Sometimes also you'll see me do code like this where I don't use the brackets, but Whenever I um, do things in update where I expect I'm probably going to have more things in here, I will usually start off with the brackets. But uh, yeah, that's, that's all there is for today. Um, thank you for watching, and um, I assume you guys are probably all subscribed, but if not, please go ahead and subscribe, and I'll get those other two videos up like I mentioned. All right, take care.